Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's JB Sphere Freak, and today I'm going to be giving you all the information that you need on how to play Pyra, the basics. Throughout this video, I'm going to be giving you all of the damage percents that any move will do, when each individual move will kill, and what is the best way to utilize these moves into your playstyle to get the most out of Pyra. All death kill percents were also done on Bowser from center stage. So realistically, these are the highest points that you should ever be able to kill at, as obviously lighter characters will die easier. And also keep in mind of DI and things on the lines of that. Just the standard stuff. Also, for this video, pretend the down B button doesn't exist. I'm not going to be talking about Mithra at all in this video, and that will all be for a future video coming up. So stay tuned. Let's start off with Jab. Both a multi-jab and a standard jab are pretty decent for the jobs that they do. Multi-jab tends to provide a fair bit more damage around the 20% range or so for a standard multi-jab, whereas the standard jab is more of a launcher. Now I found myself using her standard jab a bit more than the multi-jab, because I find it plays more into her overall playstyle. Some of Pyra's moves are a little slower than other average characters and especially compared to some faster characters. However, her sword has huge range. So very much like Marth, the main thing that you want to do with Pyra is to keep your distance and play your spacing with her attacks that deal quite a lot of damage naturally on their own. And to that end, I prefer to use standard jab, which is going to get the enemies out of my face, then deal a higher amount of damage with the multi-jab overall. But obviously each individual circumstance or situation might call for the multi-jab over the standard jab, but just keep that in mind. I'm moving on swiftly to F-Tilt. This, to be honest, isn't a great move. It's rather slow, has quite a lot of lag, and doesn't even kill until a very high percentage. It does deal decent damage, however. I can only really recommend using this, though, under very specific circumstances, as in almost all situations, forward air that we're going to talk about later will be the better option to use. You might, however, find some use for it at the edge as an opponent tries to recover, so that the kill percent's a lot lower, and the hitbox is pretty decent so it's not too bad in that circumstances but for the most part it's not a move that you should be spamming at any extent on the other hand however we have up tilt which is fantastic comes out nice and quick very large hitbox as it's a swipe above your head and it can kill at a reasonable percent too you're also able to spam it to some extent so it's pretty good as an anti-air option as well however it does lack a bit of range vertical range so you might be vulnerable to down airs and things as opponents come down but in most circumstances even if an enemy is coming to you across the ground this will be the more ideal option even than forward tilt dealing only slightly less damage it can also hit opponents on the ledge above you and can therefore be used as a pretty effective combo tool such as up tilt jump into up air and down tilts also a pretty good move this is also the only move that pyra has that has a sweet and sour spot with the end of the blade or the fire portion being the sweet spot and closer to the hilt being the sour spot the knockback difference is negligible however the slight increase in damage is quite nice however the issue with it being a down tilt is that simply if your opponents jump, which tends to happen a lot, you're more than likely going to miss. And even if an enemy's approaching you, a lot of players like to short hop forward air or neutral air into initiation rather than something like dash attack. So actually hitting the move and its usefulness does degrade a little bit. However, it's a fantastic combo move, whether it's used on the sweet or sour spot. And if there's the option there to use it to start a combo, take it. Pretty much down tilt into any aerial will connect at most percentages. So play around and see what you think. I personally tend to like forward air or back air, and in certain circumstances, up air tends to work better. And forgetting about aerials just for now, we can look at dash attack. One of the only moves I unfortunately got right from my speculation video when the trailer first released. But it's again a pretty decent move. The motion is pretty similar to Ike's dash attack, but with much more range and 
a fair bit more power. It's again a pretty good move for spacing as well with its decent range. Although it does come out a little bit slower than most other dash attacks. Again, similar to how Ike's dash attack works. So if you're used to the timing and spacing of that, then this should be pretty easy to master as well and get the hang of. Of course though, like most dash attacks, it has a pretty large amount of lag at the end of it. So use it sparingly, making sure that when you perform this move, you're actually going to hit. And to finish off the grounded attacks, we have the smash attacks. And we're gonna start off with forward smash. It's honestly a pretty decent move. There's a little bit of startup, but not a whole lot. And it has some serious power and range, considering the fact that she also takes a step forward during the smash attack. Fully charged, it can kill the heaviest character in the game center stage at under 50%. And with correct spacing, can be a very effective option as opponents either land or try to engage on you, dealing pretty decent damage as well at the same time. And it should also also be able to net you some pretty early KOs. Again, it doesn't have a sweet spot or sour spot, so regardless of where you hit the opponent, at the front of the move or at the back of the move, you're going to be dealing some serious damage and some serious hurt to your opponents. Next, let's look at up smash. You will probably only ever get one or two hits from this move, however there are a lot of lingering hitboxes, as the move is designed to be a multi-hit, but simply doesn't function that way. It's also important to note that as the move goes on, those hits get weaker. So for the most possible kill power, hit at the beginning of the move rather than the end of the move. Overall, it's not too bad, especially if you can hit them with the first hitbox that sends them into the second from ground level. And the power's pretty decent as well. But because of those strong lingering hitboxes, this will probably be the best option if someone like Link or Zero Suit Samus is using their down air on you. Compared to up tilt, which even though it's a very good move, the hitbox isn't out for particularly long, whereas this should give you relatively good protection, especially from above. Again though, with Pyra and all of her smashes, it has a little bit of lag at the end of it. And let's move on to down smash, and I'll make this one really simple for all of you. Do not use this move. Yes, the hits come out pretty fast, similar to how, again, Ike's down smash is extremely quick for the first hit compared to all of his other smashes. However, it delivers extremely low damage for a smash attack, especially on a character like this. The launch power isn't particularly impressive as well, and in almost all situations, neutral special is going to be the best option, especially if using down smash to cover both your front and your your back. Without any charge, it deals nearly as much damage as the fully charged smash. It allows you to move back and forwards to chase your opponent if they've rolled a bit too far for your down smash or neutral B. And even though at no charge it won't kill for a long time, the move does charge extremely quickly. And once fully charged, if you get the opportunity to use it, it kills extremely early and a lot earlier than what you'll get from down smash. So unless the situation really calls for that just quicker slash to get the enemy away, just use neutral special instead. But we're going to come back to the specials in a little bit because now it's time for the aerials. And we're going to start off with neutral air. It's not bad. The hitbox I find a little bit too small for what the actual move is and I find usually in most circumstances it's better to just use a directional aerial rather than neutral air. But it does deal a decent amount of damage and it'll be good therefore to rack up damage on your opponents and because of its relatively low knockback it should also be pretty effective for combos. Forward air in my opinion is a much better move in this regard. The knockback still isn't crazy high however if off stage or at the ledge it should be pretty effective for picking up KOs as well as because of the size of her sword and the hitbox it's fantastic for spacing and is the move that I recommend to usually jump in with compared to neutral air as it deals very high damage is very easy for yourselves to space and gives you a lot of distance between you and your opponent which again plays into the way that you want to play pyra with good spacing and distance 
Moving on to back here, and this is going to be your killing aerial. It deals the most damage out of all of her aerials, but by far has the most killing power. What's especially unique is it sends up and away, rather than just away. Meaning it's also going to be a very effective anti-air tool, which with its power should be able to pick up some pretty easy KOs, and even on ground level is pretty respectable with its power. Depending on the character that you're up against, you could also possibly be able to spam it. However, it does have a little bit of lag when landing with it, so if you're against a faster character, it's probably a better idea to use this a little bit more sparingly. On the other hand, however, we have up air, which in terms of damage and knockback is the weakest, but has by far the least amount of landing lag, which makes it, again, very effective for juggling. And because of the large swipe that is used on the larger than average hitboxes, it's also going to be a pretty effective move to use on ground level, however you will need to probably practice with it a bit before you actually get the hang of it. But this will be a very good option for faster characters, especially Zero Suit Samus because she is a bit taller than others, to be able to catch them with a sneakier, faster aerial to then potentially follow up into something else. However, if the opponent's already near the blast zone and is relatively low percent, you'll have to make the decision whether up air sending directly up will be the better option or back air will be sending up and away as when you're that close to the blast zone, back air might just have a bit more kill power. And the final aerial is down air. Again, it's pretty good. A large arc of the sword downwards and with the sword's range, it's pretty effective for hitting opponents. The spike is also extremely easy to land from my experience. Even very close to the start up and the middle of the sword swing, you can tend to hit the meteor pretty reliably. And even if you miss the meteor, it's still got a good amount of launch power, especially if you're off stage or near the edge. Although it does have quite a lot of lag when landing with it, so I wouldn't use it and spam it as you might want to with some of the other aerials. But whatever floats your own boat. And that's it for the aerials, it's time for some specials! Starting with neutral B, Flame Nova. It's, in all honesty, a pretty bad move and should only really ever be used as a punish to catch a roll or something like that. The hitboxes do come out pretty early, however, without charging the move, it doesn't really have any meaningful damage or knockback. So it's highly recommended to charge even if only a part partial charge to just get more damage and more kill power to where the move's not too bad. It's also a little weaker from behind than the front, but the difference is very minuscule and will, and will probably make not that much difference overall in an actual game. To note about this move though is that the final hit is obviously the launcher which deals at full charge 15.6% and this is the hit where you want to make sure that your opponent is at the 81%. As if they're at this percent and you only hit them with that final hitbox, it won't kill, as the move really does add a lot of damage as it's charged. It's also not effective at the edge, as the explosion final hitbox doesn't hit beneath or above you, so you couldn't use it to potentially two frame an enemy or cover get ups. My review, use it as a punish if you want damage, but if you still want kill power, forward smash is still stronger, so make your decision accordingly. Moving on to a much better move, however, is side B, blazing end. This this move is fantastic for racking up damage and can be effective for picking up KOs as well. There's obviously two variants of it, whether you flick or whether you just tilt, and both have slightly different uses. If you flick, the blade goes further and has higher damage potential, but isn't really as consistent. Whereas if you tilt and you hit with both the projectile part and the spinning part at the end, from my experience, I've always had the same damage output. This is a great move to just keep throwing out to space your opponents away. It it's also extremely effective for covering most options at the ledge, as the only reliable option through it will be to roll through, which even though you can't punish it, because you don't have your sword and can't attack, if timed properly, you should have your sword back to defend yourself anyway by the time they make it. It can also therefore be pretty effective for preventing recoveries from above the ledge, which is good because her final special that we're going to talk about covers below the ledge. One important thing to keep in 
mind as well is that only when the sword is being thrown out can it be reflected. Once the sword starts spinning, there's no risk of it being reflected. And the final hit has a larger hitbox than all of the normal hits, which can cause opponents to misspace the move. You'll probably find yourself though always wanting to move away from the sword once it's been thrown, especially if you're playing against someone with a reflector. However, for the most part from my experience, if it's going to get reflected, you can't really get out of the path in time. Keep in mind as well when using this move that you can't attack or grab, meaning your only option is to move or shield and dodge. So make sure you stay away from all opponents. In a future update, I do hope they change this move slightly to allow you to grab and pummel, but not throw, as grabs can be pretty hard to land anyway, especially if your opponent knows what they're doing. And I think it'd be pretty fair for you to be able to protect yourself in some, some form or another. Being able to pummel is okay as well because it doesn't use the sword, you just can't throw them. But yeah, very good move, should be used regularly. And then last but not least, her final special, Prominence Revolt. Her recovery move, which is fairly decent. It has good vertical height, but is one of those where you go up and if you're not near the ledge, you're going straight down to the blast zone. Power wise though, it's very effective, as well as because of the fire and the big sword, has quite a large hitbox. I found myself able to catch a lot of opponents moves and other specials with the first initial slash of up B linking me into the second slash and because it only kills at a pretty good 120% or lower it's a pretty good move also for picking up KOs and the utility doesn't end there because as I mentioned before with side B covering the ledge but won't cover beneath the ledge this on the other hand will as the hitbox goes through the floor and can prevent people from recovering. On the note of recovering though I wouldn't recommend using side B for recovery as in most cases it won't end well. So try to mix up your recovery by using the forgotten move that I mentioned at the beginning of this video or use up B sparingly at different angles to catch your opponents off guard. And her final moves are her grabs and throws. We'll quickly just start with the pummel and to cover all bases. It deals 1.8% damage per pummel and can be used pretty quickly so it's pretty effective for racking up damage. All of her throws however are pretty weak especially back throw which from my tests wouldn't kill Bowser until 675%. However they're all pretty good for combos. Forward throw especially is pretty good at low percents to lead into a forward air to again create space from you and the opponent. Down throw is the strongest one out of all of them and should only really be used at very low percents or for mix ups at higher percents. And at sort of mid to high percents I recommend using up throw and string it into up air strings to add on some real damage. And if you can finish off with the promise revolt at the end, even better. And now a few miscellaneous bits of information. Pyra's weight is the exact same as Mario, which I'm not sure if that's insulting or not and if they've taken that from this particular cutscene that you'll be seeing on screen right now. But in terms of gameplay, average weight isn't too bad. Her movement speed isn't particularly quick as, as well across the ground however she does have really really good air mobility again bringing it close to the fact that those aerials are really good for approaching and using for spacing but the overall play style that you want to have with Pyra is as I've mentioned throughout the video use your aerials and your huge range for high damage and lots of spacing use your specials frequently depending on the enemy to build up damage quickly and potentially get some early KOs and once you get your opponent to high percent finish them off with one of Pyra's many very strong attacks. In terms of gameplay and play style the best way is to kind of play similar in a sense to villager but nowhere near as passively. Play passive when it suits you to be able to play passive with blazing end and your long range and then if your opponent's starting to suspect your play style mix it up and go in with some combos with some grabs and your strong aerials. And for the final bit of miscellaneous info, Pyra's final 
Smash. Sakurai wasn't lying when he said that Pyra's final smash was designed for killing. It kills super early and if you're able to hit it, in most circumstances, it's going to guarantee a KO. And even if they're lower than kill percent, it still deals a hefty amount of damage, considering that Mithra's is designed to be the damage final smash. The hitbox and range as well aren't too bad, so it's a pretty good move if you've got it as an option. And that's all the information and the basics that you need to play Pyra. I hope you've all enjoyed this video and if you have, make sure to subscribe down below, especially so you don't miss my video on how to play Mithra, which will be coming soon. And until that video guys, peace. Hey, still me, I just want to add this quickly to the end of the video. Thank you so much for everyone that supported my last video that's brought up to two and a half thousand views. And thank you to everyone that subscribed and became a part of the family. It means the world to me. Seriously, thank you so much. You guys are the best. And I hope you're looking forward to my future videos. That's JB out.